Well, hello. I hope you've brought your fun juice for tonight for another Inside Star Citizen review. We've been doing this for since the dawn of time. And I think it's my favorite thing to do on the channel. One of my favorite things to do on the channel. Just being able to like chill out, talk about Star Citizen. Probably one of my favorite things to do. And I hope you guys brought the fun juice tonight. I feel like this year for Inside Star Citizen is phenomenal. I feel like back to back to back like we've had amazing episodes and i feel like this one is going to be also very very exciting um we're talking about orison we're talking about crusader which for me i've been looking forward to for a very long time ever since i stare at crusader or staring at crusader i'm just like hey you know come on let's let's do it space whales yar let's go to it you know but orison scheduled for 3.14 patch which i am dubbing the pie patch I, I am the first one here calling uh 3.1 for the pie patch pie patch is almost upon us bring the pie you understand bring us the pie because along with that comes orison comes crusader and it's scheduled for the end of june so i'm i'm very much looking forward to this is the year, boys, that a lot of the mechanics and the game development is going to progress. I, I, I'm i telling you, uh, we watched the Morphologist video about three weeks ago, and Morph, Morph was saying, you know, I don't think uh, Orison's coming out. I don't think any additional systems coming out. And I disagreed. And we knew it when the map came out uh, that I was right. He was wrong, and that's okay. That type of thing happens all the time as content creators. That is speculation. That's the nature of the game. I've been wrong on things before. But I'm glad I'm right on this one. I'm very glad I'm right on this one and that he is wrong on this one because I'm really much looking forward to it. Uh, the pie patch is upon us. Now let's watch and let's see what, what we get. Let's see if this episode will deliver. Like I'm really hoping that we get a lot of details. I'm hoping that we get a lot of like great candy like pie shots. I really want a lot of good pie shots. Uh, I think that's what any of us can hope for is quality pie shots quality pie shots I, I hope jared jared i hope you're bringing it i mean he has been he has been what's up Wayne? how you doing welcome to the inside star citizen review welcome everybody thanks everybody for making it here today thank you so much for making it and let us watch inside star citizen they've been knocking it out lately jared's been doing a hell of a job <laughs> One of the main things that we hey, want to do with Orson is create a place that's visually distinct from anything else we've done before. As someone in the universe, it's kind of a destination. It has this like unique open space. And yes, we've seen some of this, but this is a much more detailed. Thanks, Dodge. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you here. Good to see you here. Feeling which separates it out from a lot. <laughs> Win says I simp for DJ. It's becoming quickly one of the best places we've ever made. Everybody's gonna go there. What's really Everybody's gonna go there. Is that it is a floating city that Crusader uses to manufacture all their ships. It's just a really great place where this company set up their entire network, including places for the people that work for them to live, to shop, all that kind of stuff. One thing that we've learned from previous landing zones that we were able to apply to Orison was this idea of focus on places to visit. So with that in mind, we already knew. Sure, Kill. Thank you for that, buddy. Thank you. Let's see what's going on here. Why you're not being able to hear this? I've got it up quite a bit here, but we will talk. Maybe audio. Maybe Jared. Jared. But it had to be this just as high really as it goes. Unfortunately, place where everything is gorgeous to look at. Uh, everything is scenic. In comparison to the other locations, we try to improve the um, navigation for the player and have everything a bit more easy to read and to navigate to. We have, you know, all kinds of assets that are just adding a lot more movement to the scene. This is looking really good. <laughs> Welcome to the fan, Fire Lord. I haven't seen Mom there in a while. Mom twirling her knives. You're in trouble now. Yes, uh, the sound issues actually were on Jared's part, not on Pepe. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick up for you there, Pepe. I'm gonna stick up there for you on that one. <laughs> 
How many of you guys are really looking forward to Orisan? Oh, it's looking real good. It's looking real good. End of June. End of June. I think they're going to deliver. I think we're going to see a lot of goodness out of 2021. I think we're going to see a lot of goodness. And that's something that I think will really bring a lot of life that we've not quite done before. So the commercial platform, or as people in Orison know it, CloudView Center, is kind of the main hub of Orison. It should really give the feel of almost <laughs> not <laughs> quite a theme park, but have that sense of pageantry that you would expect from there. When the player arrives at the commercial platform, right in front of you, after leaving the train station, you have a nice uh, rest and relax area with some, some uh, fancy little trees. A lot of the time, our landing zones are quite still. There's I like pirates. I like what pirates saying. <laughs> Not a lot of things moving around, but what we wanted to do with Arson, since it's essentially a lot of gardens floating around in a gas giant, is that we have an opportunity to play with wind. And we had a couple different ideas, but the cherry blossom kind of style of tree. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at the detail on that. That's nice. This is the landing zone on uh, Orison on Crusader, Killian. And then they're going to. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. K Kilo was asking. So this is uh, the landing zone Orison on Crusader. Um, and I'm telling you, I, it will be expanded upon this year as well. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. There's going to there's going to be an expansion on it before uh the new year hits as well. So according to what I've been reading and researching, uh, a lot of work's being put into this. A lot of work. In fact, talked with a couple of the devs and they're like they're just saying like how they're just like seriously putting tons of work into this. Three stuck out because they could do the effect of having stuff blowing in the wind, which I think is going to be quite beautiful. And I think it's really going to create a very calming space for the player to relax. It's not the sur it's not really the surface because it's a gas giant, so it's actually floating in the troposphere. Now maybe they need to work on like coloration. So Kilo, that's a really good uh, point. That's a really good point, dude. Because of the color of Crusader, I'm not quite sure if it would be blue. That's a really good point, actually. So you know something to think about moving forward as well but this is like a floating like a cloud city of, of sorts because it's a gas giant crusader is a gas giant you have one of the main attractions is this unique creature the storm wall or as it's commonly known the space whale that lives amongst the clouds there and it's it's a big draw and they do tours for it and so they really want to highlight that in a dramatic way and then they I, developed really i love that I love that, that like our idea of this space whale is like a tourist attraction for the planet. And Crusader has a wonderful lore. Really take some time out to go to the RSI site and read about Crusader and how Crusader was formed. It's a fabulous story. And uh, Crusader is a manufacturer of ships that uh, go from uh, the planet Crusader. And there's a whole backstory of it. It's absolutely fantastic. But I love the space whale monument. I love the space whale statue coming from the minds of the very people backing the game. I initially didn't like the idea of the space whale. As time moved forward and I realized I looked at the design of it. I looked at the artwork. I was like, this looks great. And then realized it wasn't just going to be like space whales everywhere or space whales out in space. That they were going to be like a creature that literally lived off the gas in a gas giant, which is fantastic. I think I think uh, Michael is correct. I think everything that in the, is in the sky right now is the placeholder. I think you'll see improvements upon the visuals in terms of like the sky, the, the look, the setting because they're still developing Crusader as we speak. So that that is a very good point, Michael. Um, and Jiro is saying it's an oxygen layer, and if it's mostly nitrogen like Earth, it should have a blue sky. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Really stunning kind of flowing sculpture to back end it. And this wind sculpture is, kind of feels like the whale is splashing a big wave behind it. Which again ties into the hey, sense milk. of wind and movement that's across the platform. Right tech. Green right. circle are very the main habs on Orison. They're kind of like a You can you know when you're around a space whale because as you're hunting them for their space whale jelly, uh they're they're actually called gas whales because you can hear the sound of their mating. And it hold on, hold on. Let's listen real closely to one of them right now. They're they're really heated up. Hold on. 
Oh, oh, there, there it goes. There it goes. Woo. <laughs> Split between a hotel and apartments. And it's the main place people stay when they're visiting Orson. And it's got a really gorgeous lobby that you can come into with a new feel. And one of my favorite features is this hot tub sauna area that overlooks the Vista oh, yeah. the Coffee Center. And it's stunning and a really great addition. So I thank the art team for adding that. The Habs are a lot like what we've done before. The difference here being that we're kind of bringing in a lot of the look and feel of arson into the Habs, <laughs> and it's going to have a little bit more of, uh, you know, organic Looks so like good. wood, uh, yes. a few more plants, and it's just yes, more organic. a little bit more homely. I love it. Like, in the midst of the clouds, they're going with, like, a more uh, organic kind of, like, bio look. I like that. I like it a lot. Rather than cold and high tech. Stratus at Cloudview Center is the main shopping building. And I think in general, it's going to be very different from a lot of other shopping areas we've done because it has a lot of sort of, you know, character and feel. And one of the main features is Voyager Bar. Rocket Man. How you doing, buddy? Building that awesome tram and dual universe under our headquarters. I hope everything's going well. By the way, we're going to show that on a stream. He, he made a Connie in dual universe that is fantastic we'll eventually put that on the channel within the next month or so but like gr great to have you here rocket man it's great having you in our organization we're having a blast we're having a blast we're on the roof voyager bar is going to have some really really incredible views towards the rest of orison i can imagine going up there having a drink at sunset and just enjoying my day there oh that looks As so we nice lead towards final art in uh, the commercial platform, there's a lot of little things we need to sort of figure out, um, mostly to do with tidying up a lot of uh, the geometry and, you know, making sure that the place is playable to the best extent. We're building Orison with room to grow. So, of course, later on in future releases, we're going to be adding right. Orison General and the main Crusader nice. showroom. The showroom will show off all the ships that Crusader makes and Orison General will start featuring our new kind of life and death cycle healing mechanics and all that kind of stuff when that comes online we also need a whole new loadout sets for characters currently we are using mm. placeholder ai and the outside patio bar hell yeah oh yeah very nice i want a casino i want a casino here who else wants a casino in orison thank you kilo thank you man I, I think i need some casino action here Something we're setting up for future releases are the maintenance access points. With the idea that these doorways can lead into mission areas where players will be assigned exactly to players when. or sneak into an area. And there's a lot of possibilities that we can put behind those doors. But by building in those access points now for future mission content, it gives us a lot of leeway to design stuff. I think once we're done, it's really going to create one of the best spaces. Yes, Killian. In, uh, yes, I think we all do. I really hope that players visiting Orison get a sense of really being a visitor. And I want those screens to actually show us the quantum that Tony Z has talked about um, at Citizen Con. I cannot wait to see a functioning economy with some depth into it. Like, I really think that's the only thing holding me back from playing all the time. Like a feeling of permanence, a feeling of actually playing and it matters and coming back and, and, and that player retention, I think, is directly related to what you're doing, even in the beta form or even in the alpha form, that there's some type of like permanence, even though they're testing, I understand, but like where you can come back and you're like, OK, I did this. I did X, Y, Z. Here's what I got. And I'm moving on from this point. And one of the things I think can really add to that is like a really uh, serious depth to to economic type gameplay. You know, and I would love if these charts actually portrayed real data like that would be fantastic if they could link it to real actual buying and selling demand, you know, be wonderful, been wonderful and text like, yeah, text like I haven't been playing much because I can't spawn my damn rock, you know, like there's still some issues, the stability, it's, it's getting better. Like the stability, I have to say it's getting a little bit better, but Overall, you know, I come in, I play a little bit, get my eye candy, get what I need from it. And then like right now, go kind of go into dual universe for the kind of more like gameplay that like is a little bit deeper that I know like I'm building stuff and it will stay and will continue to grow with me. And that's really what I'm waiting on for Star Citizen so that I can go completely 110% gung ho and, and be with the org and start doing org organization things within Star Citizen and having just a really good time, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Totally. I need the bell. Absolutely, Pirate DG Stonks. <laughs> Thank you, Killian. By the way, everyone, tonight you're going to get shout outs for all the love you're giving tonight. Thank you so much for the love. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in my real life with the, with the DG in the Morning podcast the next episode because it has been just bonkers. Like, And we're not going to get into that. We're having a fun night. <laughs> we'll, we'll save the sadness for another stream. <laughs> I'm having too good of a time with you guys. Visitor. We have this sense of exploration a lot of times in visiting our, our really cool moons and other places, but here is that's this awesome, Kilo. Really curated experience to come look, learn, and see at Orison. So I, I, I hope they get to take a mini vacation within our game. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This early like look at the progress of Orison's commercial platform is just the first we'll be making over the next several months, as Stanton's fourth and most ambitious landing zone to date continues its journey from from tropospheric dream to persistent universe reality. But up next, from teams leaving their marks on the universe to the universe leaving its marks on our ships, systemic vehicle visual degradation has been in nice. the sights of our developers for a while now. A long and the time. first major steps in delivering a world of wear, dirt, and car washes is currently underway. All right, let's check We want out. our ships to feel like they're grounded in the universe, that the universe leaves its Dirtiest ship in the universe, right there, the mole. I better get real dirty, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, miners? Mark on our ships, and that the, the dirty. where you've been tells a tale on your ship. When you've used your ship and you've taken it down to a planet, or you've flown through an asteroid belt, or whatever it is that you've done in your ship, we want you to be able to, the next time you come to your landing pad and you where see your it? ship, be able to go, yeah, you know, it looks like this because, because. of something I've done. It's never been done properly in any game. It's really never been done properly in any game. People have tried. People have tried the wear and tear. But it's never really been done to my satisfaction in any game. Name a game where, like, the places you've been are actually on the vehicle that you drive. Like, properly. Never really been done. We want the veg. That's a that value-added gameplay. Don't get dirty. Actually, get dirty. This is the episode for So right it. now we're working on our first version of visual degradation for the vehicles. <laughs> There's lots of things that we want to explore um, with, with this feature. And right now we're kind of looking into what wear really means across the board. A lot of our assets <laughs> in game already do wear and um, do get dirty. We want the ships to look like they've aged. To get to that end frame, we need to break that down into different elements like dirt, which is the build-up. There's kind of two concepts of dirt that we're we're throwing around. There's the um, environmental build-up, which which we, we already have in terms of our characters and the snow biomes, and yeah. and you know you go and fly into a muddy swamp. And that will be improved upon. And right now I'm loving it. And right now I'm absolutely loving it. And that will only get improved upon. You would expect there to be mud on your landing gear, um, but there's also the kind of concept of dirt, which I think we already you already see in a lot of our wear maps is um the build-up of grime and it, it's the the it's an additive process it's layers that are being built so um, good on top of whatever the ship came like out of the factory so good. and of course with ships getting dirty there's also going to be the concept of cleaning your ships um for the initial release we're simply looking at when you go and go to a repair terminal your ship gets cleaned and then were, which is more of the wow that was fantastic did you guys see all the dirt there and the grime that was nice be subtractive if you will so we're taking things away it's the paint fade that you get if you leave your you know, your car out in the sun it's the scratches it's the the lack of peeling the layers being peeled away as you rub up against something or you know, oh, you go so dirty, or whatever we decide will be the uh, kind of controlling element and i expect there'll be lots of controlling elements the first version of vehicle degradation is cosmetic only so to get that what we're looking at is that's great because that tells me that they've planned it for more than just the cosmetics like that comment from peter just tells me that they've actually planned degradation and and that's actually been shown through weapon damage through weapon damage only but to me, from what that, from what Peter's saying, that actually sounds like they're thinking about degradation of actual parts of your ship from the elements, which would be a bonus. That, to me, would be a win. That would be a really good thing to do. 
it's, it's thinking about it in two levels the macro where we're looking at the, the ship as a whole and we're masking it and doing a curvature bake so that we can tell the engine which areas are exposed to the, the elements if yeah. you will and I believe we all wanted that from the very start, Killian, but the only thing I've ever seen personally is degradation through wear and tear with weapon damage, never really from the elements. You know, I would love to see what happens to your ship as, say, for instance, it's been on Microtech's surface for too long. That would be fantastic. That would be fun to see. Like, cosmetic now... But I would love to see, especially with that episode where they talked about engineering and they talked about all of the like parts and pieces that make a ship function, be so cool if the elements that you were in, your environment, started to affect those pieces and parts on your ship in an engineering sense. That would be fantastic and give more justification for an engineer career role. That would be really, really cool. And those are the areas that will start to see the wear first as the ship ages. Taking it down to more of a macro level, we're looking at the textures that describe the panels that make up the exterior of the ship. And we're thinking of the panels, the panel lines, the edges. They're the bits that are going to be slightly more prominent. And in these areas, that's where the wear will come in. There's other things that, that we oh, need to consider as well when, cool. when we're looking at the wear. We need to establish really exactly what wear means versus dirt versus damage versus aging. They're separate um, systems and separate features that we want to be able to support. So when they come together, we get this really kind of beautiful, consistent, visually appealing end product. We need to look at how our materials or how our paints scratch and how different brands would coat their paints to allow them to scratch and, and behave. I like it. I like the level of detail I'm seeing here. It looks really, really sexy. Differently, if you take some of our kind of like our high end ship manufacturers, you'd expect them to be using much um, more expensive materials in their manufacturing and how they wear is going to be very different to how some of our lower end you know, manufacturers kind of build their ships and, and how their materials wear. So once we've released this initial version of visual degradation, there's still a lot of work to be done in, in um, to get us to where we want to be. Going forward, we're taking this and we're doing it on a limited number of ships to start with because we we want to dial in what these values are and how they behave and just verify everything's working as we should and then we get the pipeline established. Um, there's, there's still a lot of work to do, especially on the dirt side of things, but it's a good, it allows us to kind of test the waters, see what people think of, of the way we're going. Now we're going to have this dynamic system in place. We... We want <laughs> Melkier says washing the jets was my least favorite thing in the military. <laughs> to be able to have What's all up, ships Dark Angel? start from a, a new place and then tell the story of the universe as they travel through it. So what did we learn this week? Fantastic. Well, we learned that with Orison, the team is building a landing zone that will look, feel, and play unlike any other. That with wear and dirt, your ship will feel more an integrated part of the universe than ever before. And that with wear and dirt also comes newly clean versions of spacecraft. So what's a, what's a newly clean reclaimer look like? We're all going to find out together. We're inside Star Citizen. Yes, Twobbles, they have here. been. We'll see you all next And I want the ship to be, I want ship ownership to be like very important for people. And, and like what Tech is saying, he's like, so I get the impression that at some point you will really, really not want to blow up your ship. And, you know, I really think that's important balance, you know, Tech, is to get it right so that like, you understand the abilities of the ship that you're buying and that you have in the verse that it means something when you buy it and that when you fly it, you are very aware of your surroundings, you know, because you don't want to blow up your ship because blowing up your ship would be bad. It would be a very bad thing to blow up. And and I really want it to mean something. And we can get into like an uh, um, LTI talks too about this, but I won't. But, you know, like there's that's a really, really good uh, topic of of discussion where we're going to go from here going into the future in terms of like ship ownership. You know, I'm all for it, too, as well. Tech. Uh, Dutch says the only thing I'm worried about is the canopy, the gladius. Oh, oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's going to be something to think about, too. You know, I don't want it to play it too easy, though. You know, Dutch, you know what I'm saying? But I, I get where you're I, I get where you're coming from. If it gets to the point where visibility, visibility is so low that you can't look out the Gladius's cockpit window, then yeah, there might be an issue there, but maybe there's like something that you can do to counterbalance all the dirt. 
<laughs> Sexy washing drones, for instance, Pirate says. I wonder how LTI ships would fare with aging and wares. Interesting, DY. Very interesting comment. One day you're going to be flying your ships apart. Yeah, the wear and tear of just simply flying it all the time. Absolutely, DY. It's going to be hard finding that balance. Absolutely, Dutch. I think really it's going to be us sending in like bug reports and our own comments on Spectrum and, and being very vocal in the community. Absolutely. Tech says, don't worry, it'll buff out. Implement cheaper pairs for that, says Dutch. Yeah, you could do that, Kill. You could. Uh, yeah, we need persistence. Uh, and dynamic damage. Yes, those are two very important things. And stabilitize. Stabilitize, number one. Stabilitize, stabilitize, stabilitize. Say till you're blue in the face. That is really what we need to be focusing on this year. It's like the server type issues moving forward so that we can have increased player counts, so we can have better times, uh, less 30Ks. Stabilitize this year is the word that needs to be repeated over and over again, really. Stabilitize, right, Kilo? Stabilitize. Like, I'm going to say it every single time I'm streaming Star Citizen. It is so important. I've gotten so much, like bad feedback from that from from other content creators who are like you're crazy you don't know anything about game development how dare you say something like that this is an alpha and i'm like laughing to myself like guys you know this is my opinion you guys can say what you want about it i've been following star citizen for six years now telling telling somebody that has been following uh, uh game development for six years that they know nothing about game development is a very ignorant type comment <laughs> or opinion to, to be had they're they're allowed to have it just like i'm allowed to have the opinion that i want more stability stability is Im completely important completely important even in an alpha stage especially now with the way the games are funded games are funded pretty much by people now by the people that want to play the game the whole industry is changing the whole genre is changing time to change with the times alpha should be a little bit more stable now this isn't an alpha from 1997 this isn't an alpha from 2004 you know this is an alpha from 2014 that has progressed for seven years okay we have to start getting realistic we have to start saying stability we, Jiro, you know plenty. <laughs> yeah, we want more stable motion. Absolutely agree with Jiro right now. We still need like less jank on the movement. Absolutely. I think flight, uh, I, I think the flight experience has gotten better. Um, overall, I think I, I'm very happy with where the, the, the direction is going with, with, with just the flight experience. They need to work more on that. Uh, but I really think 2021 it's going to be a, a, a year where you're going to see a lot of the game mechanics that we've been asking for uh, uh, being streamlined. And you'll see the origin points of these, like the, the, the very first versions of them hit the board and then we'll improve upon it. A lot of people are underselling 2021 for Star Citizen. And I'm going to like personally, in terms of game development and in, in, in terms of what I'm seeing, I'm actually very positive very positive for for what's happening in terms of game development for star citizen in this year and i don't see a lot of others that are that way now in terms of like business management in terms of like the the real world business that cloud imperium is needs some work <laughs> needs some work i won't go over that tonight but i do want to say this guys i do want to say this slancha which is cheers and I want to say thank you for everybody joining me tonight. I had an absolute blast. You guys just, you guys work your magic on me, recharge me, give me that energy. Really, really. I, I, I literally, Thursday is one of my favorite days. Hopefully I'll be able to stream tomorrow morning, tell you a little bit about what's going on in my real life. I, and like I said, in, in if you guys didn't look at my community tab or in our Discord, kind of told everybody what's going on with me personally in the real. It's been very hectic. And I really want to, Thank those people who are super patient, who understand the fact that I've got a lot of things going on in the real right now. Uh, but also know that there's nothing more than I, what I want is just to be here and, and to create content because it's absolutely what I love to do, what I absolutely love to do. So thanks, everybody, for joining me here tonight on the Inside Star Citizen Review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are freaking awesome. And um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll keep you guys posted in the Discord. I uh, want to give a shout out to all the members in Dual Universe right now for our organization who have been doing really amazing things. If you guys are looking for something to do where we're very active in the gaming world, 
uh, dual universe is something we've been we've been working on a lot. Um, so a lot has been going on there. Thank you, Santa. Peace, pirate. Good night. And thank you, Killian. And thank you, Santa, for that subscription towards the end there. I think we actually hit our goal. We're so close. I think we got one more. And then we can give out a $50 Amazon gift card. That's going to be exciting. I think maybe next stream. It's going to happen soon. Thanks, everyone. See you on the next vid or stream.